Hi guys. It is a lovely but chilly night. It is a Saturday night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization in the Point Lonesome Swamp. Uh, here in the oasis of freedom on this chilly uh, Saturday night. That would be November 27, 2021. And guys, uh, I have to admit, I'm, as I was telling Book Hermit, it's getting tougher and tougher for me to get up here doing this, uh, talking to myself. Don't, don't, don't even, don't even get me going on, on, on the mainstream media right now. Anyway, I, I, I am so fucking disgusted. Uh, I apologize for the F-bomb here on this channel. I, I am really had it up to here. I'm about ready to throw in the towel on this entire channel and, and, and YouTube and everything. I, I, I am completely fed up, disgusted with this bullshit. But anyway, uh, since I uh, have no life and I'm sitting here by myself, well, with my little dog on a Saturday night in the Oasis of Freedom, I'm going to uh, probably sit here and talk to myself with two rants because I actually have a date with some woman from Pile of Fish tomorrow, so I uh, <clears throat> won't be able to do my Sunday sermon. So, anyway, what I'm going to do is this first video is going to, uh, it was going to be my Sunday sermon tomorrow until another sermon popped up unbelievably on the mainstream media, and we will uh, make that our Sunday sermon for tomorrow. But this, this one, uh, I mentioned this in a rant earlier this week. Uh, from a, this is an essay that came out in The Nation uh, a while back. It escaped my radar, but was called to my attention by, uh, I guess this woman is some kind of poet or essayist. I have to put on my second pair of glasses. Uh, <clears throat> When did this come out? This was back in July. Somehow went by under my radar from a woman, a poet, I guess, named Katha Pollitt. Never heard of Katha. And, uh, but Katha had the good sense to write this essay. And good for the nation for publishing it. Um, take it away. Katha Pollitt. We owe it to the world's children to slow population growth. Crowding the planet harms younger generations as much as it does the environment. Thank you, uh, Katha. <clears throat> All right. Does the world need more people? This is the question explored in this essay. Does the world, meaning planet Earth, need more people? Yes, uh, we can answer this question in one word. But anyway, we're going to let Katha answer it. Does the world need more people? Not if you ask the glaciers, the rainforest, the air, or the more than 37,400 species on the verge of extinction thanks to the relentless expansion of human beings into every corner and cranny of our overheated planet. There are now 7.9 billion of us and growing. 50 years ago, there were fewer than half as many. I would say we have more than fulfilled the biblical injunction to be fruitful and multiply. Yes, we have. In spite 
of all the signs indicating that slowing population growth would be a good idea. The world's most populous country is aiming for the opposite. In May, the Chinese government relaxed its two-child quota. You know, it used to be a one-child, then it became a two-child, and now it's a whatever-the-hell-you-want-to-have child. The Chinese government relaxed its two-child quota. Now couples can have three. China's population is getting old. The median age has risen from 24.9 years old in 1990 to 38.4 today. Who will care for the old folks? Who will pay into the social welfare system to support retirees? It doesn't help that the one-child policy in operation from 1980 to 2016 encouraged the killing and abandonment of girl babies and forced abortions of female fetuses, leading to a huge surplus of men, many of whom will never find women with whom to raise a family. The most recent statistics are not encouraging. In 2018, among youngsters 10 to 19 years old, there were about 120 boys per 100 girls. China is not alone. India's statistics are similar, and a growing gender imbalance due to sex-selective abortion and other factors exist in many other countries from Armenia to Vietnam. What happened to my margarita? <clears throat> still, still an extreme pref preference for sons combined with a preference for small families is only one reason the birth rate has fallen in the past few decades all over the world except in sub-Saharan Africa. But I do need to uh, break into here, as I was reporting a few days ago, actually the birth rate turned around right about the time Katha was writing this here in the United States. Uh, the birth rate actually uh, turned around in June and now people are one are beginning, and, and I agree that the birth rate has turned around. But anyway, this is still with the uh, declining birth rate meme. All right, just so you understand, I needed to add that. All right, birth rate has fallen in the past few decades all over the world except in sub-Saharan Africa. The improved status of women is also crucial. For most of recorded history, after all, most women were kept uneducated, mar married off as teenagers, and allowed no rights and few choices. They were little more than breeding stock and cheap labor for their husbands' families. Their only hope for social power and respectability lay in producing legitimate children, preferably male, who lived to adulthood. This was called nature's way. Modern birth control allows women to have fewer children, which women almost everywhere prefer while modern medicine and sanitation mean more people live into old age. In theory, women could nevertheless decide to have three, four, or more kids. Conservatives, and some leftists too, maintain that this is their true desire, or would be were they not so selfish. On the right, patriarchal self-help guru Jordan Peterson claims feminism 
deludes women into careerism instead of motherhood, citing <laughs> the Virgin Mary as a model for all. On the left, whatever Jacobin's, I have no idea what Jacobin or Jacobin's Connor Kilpatrick hymns the praise of East Germany and argues that women's desire for children is thwarted by liberalism, the handmaid of capitalism. But everything, everything, modern urban life works against big families. Even Mormons have smaller families nowadays. Again, I would have to she links that over to her research on that. Uh, I have a hard time believing that, but she there's a link to that research. Not only do modern economics, higher education, and urban living enable women's independence, giving them all kinds of ideas, but modern economics, also, modern economies, also require a large class of educated people. The days of producing children to be your farmhands are over, but raising an educated child is expensive and time intensive. Modern economies also depend on the C word, consumption, which just about everyone officially frowns upon, but ultimately means er encouraging people to enjoy life, expect material comfort, cultivate interest, and seek new experiences. The New York Times Ross Douthat, D-O-U-T-H-A-T, thinks people should have one more child than they think they want even if it would make their lives more difficult and painful. But he is a devout Catholic. For him, suffering and self-denial are virtues. I don't think there's much chance of that catching on. The logistics are just too difficult. Moreover, many modern economies do a poor job of producing the kinds of material and social goods that would make having more than one or two kids feasible. Decent affordable housing, excellent daycare in schools, flexible schedules for parents, quality health care, and so on. But even societies with generous social provisions have not managed to produce bumper crops of babies. Sweden's fertility rate is 1.85 children per women, barely higher than that of the United States at 1.78. Again, these statistics are in flux. Government can only do so much. Within the traditional nuclear family, the work of domesticity and parenthood is still paid placed squarely on women's shoulders. When push comes to shove, she is the one making the sacrifices. Isn't it funny how population issues always come down to women? First, they had too many children. Now, they are having too few. If only men Catholic priests, for example, could have babies. I'm sure they would do a much better job of it. Not only are women not having enough kids, the women who population boosters think should be doing it most are having the fewest. <laughs> In the West, the comparatively low birth rate of white, educated, middle-class women was already of concern to Teddy Roosevelt at the turn of the 20th century. The perceived need for populate the perceived need 
for population growth comes up against not only the lives of modern women, but also xenophobia and racism. It may just be that countries will have to open their arms to the rest of the world, whether they like it or not. Japan, historically unwelcoming to foreigners, has a median age of 48, maybe instead of forcibly sterilizing Uyghur women, China should be rewarding them and welcoming their babies. You know, it's hard to tell. Uh, I like this one. It's hard to tell uh, as great satire is when she's being, when she's joking and when she's not. I'm assuming she sees the humor in this, but everything she's saying, you know, uh, maybe the problem is less that there are too few kids than that there are more kids than adults can take care of. Some in war zones, in refugee camps and slums, millions of poor children are essentially thrown away along with their mothers by their societies, illiterate or barely literate, with zero prospects, suffering from all kinds of illness and trauma, and doomed to the lowest kind of work, if any. Imagine if they were seen as demographic treasures to be nurtured and cherished, and raised to live happy, full lives. The world population is still rising, but demographic decline probably cannot be reversed. Again, we shall see about that. In some ways, that is sad. Children bring joy and... and and ha, ha, hope and purpose to life. Young people bring new ideas and energy, but from the point of the view point of view of the planet, it, meaning demographic decline, is a good thing, and probably from the point of view of women and children, too. I, mean, I don't know why she left men out of that. Uh, and I am a huge champion of demographic decline, which is why uh, I'm going to uh, make my Sunday sermon. I'm going to go ahead and uh, record it now, but uh, tune in tomorrow. Right here on today's mainstream media, unbelievably, in the middle of all of this crap on the, uh, just taking over the mainstream media, unbelievably, we have this uh, essay here in the conversation from bioethicist Travis Reeder titled, The, Cri the Climate Crisis calls for fewer children, but uh, you'll have to uh, tune in on Sunday to find out why a bioethicist claiming correctly that the climate crisis and every other crisis on the planet calls for fewer, I would say, no children. Oh boy, my new smartphone is ringing. Maybe it's some hottie from Pile of Fish on Saturday night. Perfect timing. Bye guys.